Spiritual Guide to Politics. I am Liz Philippos, and I'm here to offer an expanded perspective into this moment in our collective political lives so that we come to a deeper awareness of our capacity to transform and transcend the present paradigm as agents of transformation. Each week, I talk with creative leaders about their spiritual understanding of the current political moment the possibilities for the well-being of our planetary lives and the life of the planet itself. They inspire us to know that the personal is political and the political is spiritual. There are tremendous possibilities for transformation when we really come to know this. Paul Cannon is a Kumie Ipai Native American. Paul is here with us today to share some of his insights about conscious music and to talk about the Indigenous Regeneration Project. Derived from Cannon's upbringing on the San Pascal Indian Reservation, Paul's message serves as a reminder that no matter what we face or where we come from, we should love this one life we are given. The humble talent gravitated towards music during a troubled youth. He was homeless by age 14, and Paul floundered between the streets and the judicial system. Blessed by the shining light of the kindness of others, Paul admits to a desire to save himself, to do and be different. Today, the certified Native healer works with kids who suffer from PTSD, reconnecting family together to heal ourselves and the world around us. He says, I use my dark experiences to teach the younger generation to believe that we can live the life that's in front of us. Paul's dynamic, melodic, and soulful tunes have captured the hearts of music lovers through his ability to fuse music with concepts of mindfulness, respect, and integrity, wowing audiences with his message, we have everything we need inside of us. When he's not creating music, Paul serves as the co-founder with his wife and director of operations and creative services for Indigenous Regeneration, a non-profit six-acre farm on his reservation that educates on sustainable living practices, environmental awareness, and climate change response strategies. Strategies. Welcome, Paul. Thank you so much for being with us. I would love to start talking about music. You're with the band Iron Sage Wood. You're also a solo artist with a message. Can you talk right. a bit about that? My music came into my life as a method of healing my own wounds. Like most people that grow up on a native reservation, that come from a native people that's been oppressed, there's inherited trauma that's still lingering in the air. I was confronted at a very early age, like, what do I do? Like, how do I get out of this? How do I repair myself? How do I survive as a human when all my family members and my whole reservation and my people are falling apart and hurting? So music just naturally comes out. You know, I, I couldn't stop singing. Every time I would do something behind closed doors, I was singing out loud. I just had to sing. When my neighbor gave me my guitar, I just ran with it. And it's been my best friend ever since. <clears throat> it's been able to get me out of any predicament to heal. Now that I'm here at this side of the mountain in my life, I'm able to look down and look back at my struggles that turns out not just my struggles. It's happening to all my people and it's happening to people. And for the ones that fall through the cracks or get left in the dark, it was the people singing about love and light. It gives you a little hope and inspiration. Today, that's what I write about, that light helped me get out of that dark. The impulse to music comes from your own personal transformation. Music offered you healing and connection. 
that was a way in to also understand that your personal pain was a collective pain, a shared pain of right. indigenous people, but I hear you also saying of just being human, of, of people. The, the human condition. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing less <Right>. than that. <laughs> you know, we all go through it, and then, and then when the stars do certain things with the planets, you know, we have these strong feelings come out, and then we do really reactive, impulsive things that affect us long term. So let's play "Unite the Tribe," and then I'll ask you to talk a bit about that. This is Paul Cannon with "Unite the Tribe." When I take from the earth, I try to keep back. We are but flesh and blood, designed from scratch. When the power of love overthrows the love of power, blessings from above pour like a meteor shower. Look up to the sky. Any situation through quiet meditation, you like the tribe. We'll come back to life when you learn to let go. You can hear your soul go. So how are we gonna be the change without any self-control? Will the power love overthrows the love of power? A blessing from above fall like a meteor shower. Look up to the sky. Fear no be wide, resolve any situation through higher meditation. You like the tribe We'll come back to life When you learn to let go You can hear your soul go That is such a beautiful song. Tell us a bit about some of the lyric. We all come from a tribe. What does it mean to come together? In my tribal community, um, as a native-led organization, we deal a lot with all tribes in the Southwest, across the country. One thing you'll notice in the native community and on tribal reservations here in the United States is that they really want to empower people to come back to their tribe. My tribe, per se, is a unique reservation in the way it's set up, and there's so much disease and discomfort and chaos. Within the tribal government, it creates a separation and a disconnection between people, and that's one of our greater challenges right now in our community. So it's really a message back to my people and for myself to remind myself, oh, yeah, like, I take from the earth. So I should give back. I need to be the change if I want the change. I can't keep seeking power if I want love. It's these mantras. It's these infinite messages that have been passed down in our culture that I'm reiterating to my people, to people. Let's reunite. Let's find our healing. Let's stop living in separation, even if it's just in our mind. Let's reunite ourselves. Let's not feel divided. Mm -hmm. Let's not act divided. Let's come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Tell us the name of your people, your tribe. So we are the Kumeyaay Ipai, and we're part of the Kumeyaay Nation, which is 12 tribes in San Diego. My reservation in San Diego, North County, San Diego, it's in the city of Valley Center. It's the San Pasquale Reservation. 
I just wanted to lead to talking a bit about the Indigenous Regeneration Project that you're involved with, with your wife, Lacey. Are you the founders of that project? We are. We're in our first year of operation. So tell us about that. So it's such an exciting, remarkable project that you're doing. Oh, thank you. You know, it's been such a learning experience, and it's been really rewarding. My wife and I decided to use the years of interactions and connections I've made through the music industry and through philanthropy to start our own organization. And one of the things we saw with living away from the reservation for a few years and coming back older, wiser, more educated, is that there is a need. There's a need for connection and everything in our Western society. It's also agreeing that the reason we have anxiety and depression and addiction is there's a lack of connection. Our goal with Indigenous Regeneration, it's not specific to any one people. It's for all people, but it's encouraging people to utilize their Indigenous roots. So I also have Celtic blood, French, a lot of other different breeds in me. Utilizing ceremonies, medicines, the information of it, utilizing different practices, ways they made tools, ways they grew things. It's like having fun with it, but it's also reconnecting us to ourselves and giving my generation and people like me that feel a little displaced a little more connection. With our organization, we do these types of projects that reconnect people, reground people to the concept. We started with a six acre farm on my reservation. We worked in partnership with my reservation and we were able to successfully bring to gathering space where we could feed people, we can educate people on how to grow their own food, how to grow their own medicine, how to survive in a modern world by and also utilize their traditional methods at the same time. So cooking with native plants and food in a more modern setting. Right now we're looking at sustainable alternatives for housing. We just built the first dome on my reservation that's a super adobe sandbag dome. And it's a fraction of the cost of regular construction. It's made out of adobe and bags and dirt, which we have plenty of. And it's a community building effort, like everybody gets together and builds. And so it's a very indigenous concept. It's very contemporary with how it can house people and keep them safe. But it also brings out that indigenous quality of getting the community together to do something for the good of the community. Mm -hmm. And through it, that's what we've been seeing take place. And it's really started a lot of excitement. So we're just about making that connection, and music's a part of it. And so the organization's really like the hub. It's like the the center, Mm -hmm. and we're able to develop new technologies, have very fun, interesting workshops, and do things that just re-stimulate that growth and connection back to your roots. If you're just joining us, this is A Spiritual Guide to Politics with my guest, Paul Cannon, talking about indigenous regeneration, food sovereignty, and sovereignty of a more spiritual nature. I love what you're saying about connecting to your roots, to all of your roots, to all of your parts, reconnecting in a way that brings what we might think of as old ways to make them new again, to make them new for this moment in this time. You mentioned also the sort of disconnect on the inside, the disconnect from our own selves, from our own cells, from our own being that gets reconnected with this conscious practice and conscious awareness. It's about food sovereignty, and I'd love to hear a bit about food sovereignty and why that matters, but I'm hearing you say that it's also about something bigger, a bigger concept of sovereignty, even. Right. Well, and what is sovereignty? It means you know where your food's coming from. You know how to grow it. You know the seasons of when to plant. That's sovereignty over your food. Here in the United States, if a natural disaster takes place, we have three days of food supply that will come back to the stores after that point we're on our own. What happens when this world just changes like it always does? What are we going to do? Are we prepared? Or have we been so domesticated that as soon as they let us out the house, we're just going to fall apart or fall victim to 
whatever other guidance is, is set before us. So the real objective with Native communities right now is since they are nations within a nation and they are their own sovereign government, they want to utilize that connection because they think that when you have a connection over your food and you control your food, you don't necessarily control the people, but you control the connection to that food for the people. And as a, a government, they also want that mm-hmm. sovereignty over their food and their connection. So right now it's a win-win for us to be educating the tribe and the community on how to grow and how to have sovereignty. And the reason we want that is because of the greater connection within it is going to provide healing on so many levels. Because part of the damage or the pain comes from not having a sense of sovereignty over your own life. Yeah, a sense of ownership or feeling empowered. Mm -hmm. Right. Empowered to feed yourself and your family, empowered with a knowledge of where things come from and how we get what we need. Exactly. That's a profound disconnect that you're addressing, just the way that we are in this consumer society so removed from where food comes from, generally speaking. So yeah, it's a good point. A disaster happens. We are collectively at the behest of government, really, to supply. Mm. Right. Not an empowering place to be. Right, right. The indigenous way is there's not a monofocus. There's not just the one reason why. Everything's connected to everything. And so the healing takes place when you, even if you just come volunteer and hang out and pull some weeds with us, we're going to start talking to you about all kinds of stuff. Talk to you about the plant, talk about your spiritual beliefs, talk about quantum physics, talk about whatever we need to talk about, you know, because it's, the greater connection comes from just being in it, mm-hmm. being present, mm-hmm. doing something, mm-hmm. trying something new, educating. You know, Willie Nelson said, Take your kid to a farm because otherwise they're going to think the food comes from a box. That's right. You know, this is a very specific objective that we've taken on. It's not to say you can't go 30 miles out of the city and find, you know, the culture and and people growing and people doing these things. It's more or less that we saw a unique opportunity to feed what needed to be fed in our backyard And from there, now we've had tremendous acceptance within the community, within the tribal government, and now we have a lot of other invitations to come do similar work. And so now, for me, being both an artist and now a leader of a foundation with my partner, I'm being asked to open up more and more and more, expand, 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 and uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, Mm -hmm. physically, Mm -hmm. being asked to open up let go of who I thought I was. And for me, it's become the greatest connection to me. Like, I barely recognize who I am anymore. I don't, uh, you know, I don't even know. In this past year, you mean? Yeah, because it's been eradicating, taking away all the old patterns. There's so much transformation. There's so much leaving that I asked to leave these old patterns that weren't serving me that now I'm just in this whole new bright world, and it's new, and it's stimulating, and it's exciting. Talking about spirituality and transformation, can you say a bit about how you understand that? My understanding of spirituality is that there's no need to look outside of your own spirit. We're built in. We have everything we need. We have every answer we need. And really all meditation is, is removing these dense manifestations that reside here in this realm. Mm -hmm. And once we're able to clear those from our mind and our body, then we're left with just the spirit. So spirituality is just the state of being. It's not a philosophy. It's not a religion for me anymore. It was one phase of my evolution, a very grateful phase. I was raised predominantly Christian, went to private school for a few years, decided not to do that anymore. I've discovered and walked many paths with different religions, and the one I always come back to is is who I am. That's what we believe in my culture. Also, as Kumiai, if 
Pi people. We believe with the same word for the sun was the same word for us and was the same word for the ground. Uh, we didn't have words for like property or yours or mine. And we believed we were God. We didn't believe there was another God ordaining us. We believed we were that God. We had the power to create. And if we look in the Bible, we also see that too. God was saying, if you take from that tree, you will have the power to create and become God. And also see everything that I see as being the God. So we've become this God, this creation, this creator. But like now the creation is a creator. And we walk around denying that we have the power to create whatever we want. <laughs> and we wonder why all of a sudden our best friend calls us and we wonder why things don't go our way, but we never really sit and ask, what am I putting in front of me that I want to come my way? How much am I really dedicating my energy, my focus, my emotions to creating the experience that I really want? And for me, it becomes really challenging because sometimes it's hard to imagine something so beautiful when you live in certain scenarios in your life. So for me, I've just been being. I'm just in a state of being right now. I'm in a state of observance. I'm in a state of awe. I'm in a state of gratefulness. And I'm in a state of fire where I'm growing and I'm burning off and I'm learning my own power. What you said about us having everything that we need, we're already it. We've already been given it all. The lie is that we don't have it, that we're not that. You're really bringing that concept of having everything we need into material form through this project of the indigenous regeneration, making that material, right, in the physical. Here, we have everything we need. Mm. So that's bringing heaven to earth right there. That's it. Is there something you can share about a transformative moment when we're not in that state of feeling connected to the beauty of it? What triggered you to see it or what moved you to see it? It's been through the darkest moments in my life that brought the most light right after. It's taking a step back that gets me there on a daily basis. I think I had one in the car this morning. I was driving. I'm in traffic. I'm starting my work week over. I have a big project on my plate. I have a lot of details. So I'm in a state, not fight or flight, but definitely like cognitive side of the brain. I have to be aware to my experience. I don't know what brings it about. I guess I heard this song from the 90s. Yeah, I remember that song. Would you choose water over wine and hold the wheel and drive? And he's talking about the spiritual path. It's incubus in the song Drive. It's such a heavy concept because he's talking about spirituality and he's on a rock and roll station. I sat for a moment and I thought about it. Where am I right now? Where is my hauka? Where's my heart? Where's my soul? So I automatically recognize the pattern. And I think that's the first step to transformation, if we're not aware of the pattern, we can't change the pattern. By hearing some artist on a radio singing a song that's been sung since I was a teenager, it re-triggered that emotion and it made me address those patterns inside of me. And I think everything's, you know, on purpose, right? Like this whole experience, us having this conversation. So this message coming to me while I'm driving in the car, and I'm just kind of stuck in details in my brain, I gave myself permission to let it go and check in. What do you want? Well, I want to feel, like, really good right now. So let's go with that. Let's have some fun right now. In fact, you know, singing really loud. Nobody's in the car. Okay, great. Nobody can really see me when they're driving by either, so I'm going to let it out. And that felt so good. And they started reopening all these different channels. I'm like, oh yeah, like, you know, there's a time and place for work, but if I'm not getting back to center, if I'm not having fun, I'm not growing, I'm not healing. That's all this experience is, is about transforming. It's moment by moment. And if we're not in the moment doing the work, it's just going by. And then we wonder why we feel unease or, you know, chaos at a cellular level or I think it happens all the time, mm -hmm. and I've had many traumatic instances that have made profound impacts, 
But it's a day-to-day. It's, it's like foraging every day. You pick a little bit here, you pick a little bit there. That's good to know that whatever we call darkness, whatever we, we're experiencing as disease, that there is a path through that. It's not against it. It's actually bringing us there. If we're aware, yes. if we pay attention, it does support the idea that the universe is for us, even if it doesn't feel like it in the moment. You know, you've said so much in what you offer. That's wonderful. Paul, can you tell us a bit about what's coming up for the Indigenous Regeneration Project and for you? Well, you know, we're really excited about this dome right now. And a lot of the elders from different tribal communities have said this is going to be a revolution on this reservation and on reservations surrounding. What our eyes are on right now is developing a work-live community that's built sustainably, that's about sustainable farming practices. We just call that traditional. All of That's our term in the tribe. Like, we're just going to do everything traditional. We're going to bring it back. And so now we're looking at the concept. How do we really make this work? How do we really make sure it sustains long term? So we're doing all the workshop right now, and that's what's on the plate. We're also teaming up with Kumeyaay College to make this an accredited course of training that you can learn how to build sustainably with some earth-building techniques with indigenous and traditional parts added to it. And we also have our six-acre farm that we're always looking for loving hands to come down and just be a part of it. You know, it's so valuable for the Native community to to not only see Natives, but to see non-Natives coming together to support human behavior, human beliefs, human connectivity. That's that space. That's Matayum. That means it's gathering of the earth. We are the earth, Mm -hmm. and we are gathering the earth. We want people to keep coming and visiting and gifting the community and just gifting us with their presence and their love and their stories. And then with music, I'm just being what I am with my gift. I just sing because i got to sing. I'm really singing for my kids. I'm really singing for those generations that find it later buried in the ruins on this reservation. So I don't know where it leads me. Sometimes I get to go do a tour with Michael Franti. Sometimes, you know, I I do some, like, fun stuff. Lately, my music's been wrapped around activism and bringing the, the hemp into awareness, the cannabis plant into awareness. Also medicine, re-educating the youth on the appropriate manner of our medicines to redirect the energy so that it doesn't get stuck in the body and come out in a bunch of funky symptoms. We're just walking down this road and we're playing music and we're growing plants and we're handing out seeds and we're telling stories. It's not us. We're just walking a path. And there's other people that have walked it before us, Mm -hmm. and we just want to continue walking it in a good way. How can people find out about volunteering at Marayum? You can go to our website, indigenousregeneration.org. Facebook is our Instagram channel if you want live feed. Beautiful, beautiful. Anything else you would like to share, Paul? I would just like to share that I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for this show. I'm grateful that... You asked me to be on it and to share my story and to share what we're doing over here. I think it's so valuable to share our stories and to hear from each other and to just connect and get to know each other. We're all Earth family. So, like, I enjoy this. Thank you so much, Liz, for making my morning feel so much better now. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Paul, for sharing what you've shared. You can find out more about Paul's music at paulcannon.org. And you can also find out more about Indigenous Regeneration by going to indigenousregeneration.org. You've been listening to A Spiritual Guide to Politics here on KPFK Radio. My name is Liz Filippos. Thank you so much for listening. I'm so glad you joined us. Until next time.